Okay, in this session, I will talk about something called vorticity. Okay, this is not something that we have covered before in any other chapter of this particular course. Okay, so my approach will be two ways. The first is the mathematical approach of what we are talking about. Okay, and the second approach will be the physical meaning of this term vorticity. And this is a vector I would like you to take a note. Okay, so from the mathematics standpoint, this vorticity vector. Okay, this is an omega will be equal to one half of the curl of velocity. Okay, so this means this is the curl of velocity. Okay, now let me explain what a curl of velocity is because this is not something that I had covered before. Okay, so what I will do is I will write a matrix over here. Okay, and the matrix is going to have the way that we define it is going to have i, j, and k. That will be del del x, del del y, and del del z. And this will be u, v, w. So this is what it means by the curl of velocity. Okay? Um, let's look at the determinant of this matrix and what we'll obtain, because that will have some significance for me, right, in a moment. I want to obtain the first, basically, these determinant of this matrix. If you remember, I, when I want to have an i, I do close these two and I write myself del w del y minus del v del z in the i direction. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and write one half as well. It's not going to change the final answer for me, but let's be consistent. Okay, and I will approach this is i. In terms of the j direction, I will take a similar approach, but now the second one will have a negative sign in front of it. And if I close it, I will get del w del x minus del u del z in the j direction. And the third one will be one half. If I close the k, I will get myself del v del x minus del u del y in the k direction. Okay? okay. So now I will make some physical connection of vorticity. Okay? So the first thing that I would like to talk about is the vorticity is related to the rotation vector. It's not the same, but it's related to the rotation vector. Um, hence, if my omega vorticity is equal to zero, I go ahead and we call this flow rotational, irrotational, or potential flow. Okay, so these two terminologies are important, irrotational or potential flow. So what I mean by this is that the vorticity is related to the rotation vector, and if this rotation is zero, I mean that, that it kind of makes sense to call it irrotational, it doesn't rotate, and the other terminology is potential flow, and I will be using that as well, okay? So let's look, go up over here and try to analyze these three i, j, k, a terms, okay? So I'm saying that this is zero. So what it means is it needs to have zero i, zero j, zero k, right? If I go out and write that, what I'm gonna have is these three equations Basically, these three parentheses must be equal to zero, okay? So I will write them in this order. So what it means is del w del y minus del v del z needs to be equal to zero, okay? This is the first one. The second one says that del w del x minus del u del z needs to be zero. And the third one says that del v del x minus del u del y is equal to zero. So I can rewrite this in a much more organized way. This simply means del w del y is equal to del v del z. The second one means that del w del x must be equal to del u del z. And the third one means that del v del z x must be equal to del u del y. Okay, so simply, all of these three, not one, two, but all three, must be satisfied for my flow to be called irrotational or potential flow. And we'll talk about this potential flow in the upcoming session, okay? Now, 
I want to make a point here for 2D flows. Let's say that I'm, I am having a 2D flow. And even more specific, I mean U and V present and W0, the, you know, the third dimension, the Z direction, there is no change. Okay. So let's take a look what happens to the first equation over here. You may see that as, hey, this W will be zero, right? And also you can feel that the velocity in the Y direction will not be a function of the third dimension, which is the Z. Otherwise I call it the 3D. So this will be zero as well. So then if I look at it, this is automatically satisfied. Zero is equal to zero. So let's do the same treatment for the second equation. You can see W zero. And also my U is not a function of Z because it is a 2D flow. This being zero. So these two now becomes in a case where they're automatically satisfied. And the only equation that I have to check is this one. Okay. Um, so for 2D, this can be zero. This may not be zero. So it really depends. So I have to look into this carefully. Okay. Okay, now I will talk about something called velocity potential. Okay, this is actually a function that we introduce. Okay, and this is phi is the symbol for it. Okay, so let me first write the definition of it. For a potential flow. Okay, actually I'm not going to go forward at this point in my definition of the velocity potential. But I want you to take a look at this term potential flow. And we discussed this in the earlier in this uh, session where we said that these three, these three equations must be satisfied. So if I am interested in obtaining my velocity potential, the very first step must be to check that these three equations are satisfied. Okay. If three, if these three equations are satisfied, then I go ahead and find my velocity potential the way that I will introduce you momentarily. Okay. On the other hand, if these three equations or one of those three equations even not satisfied, then I will go ahead and say that the velocity potential does not exist. Okay. This is an important definition and I want to highlight it by just mentioning it before I talk about it. Okay. So for a potential flow, we can define a function. So I'm introducing a function again, just like the stream function, if you think about it. And I'm calling this velocity potential as the title of this section indicates. Okay. In such a way that my u becomes del phi del x, my v becomes del phi del y. And my W becomes del phi del Z. Okay. So actually, I want to be clear here and right below this, I want to rewrite my string function equation because I sometimes see some issues from this end. Okay. And I will compare contrast them for our understanding. Okay. The first point I want to make here is note that this is a three dimensional. I have U, V and W. But the stream function was only defined for two dimensions. You can also define for u and w, v and w. Okay. Okay, that's the first distinction. The second distinction here is when I look at the first how to obtain u from the velocity potential, you can see that it is simply much more traditional in a way that the velocity is in the x is obtained by taking the partial with respect to x. Similarly, the velocity in the y is obtained by taking the partial of the velocity potential in the y direction. And the third dimension, which is the W, can also be obtained by taking the partial of the velocity potential in the Z direction. However, this was not case. That was not the case when I was discussing the stream function. I would like you to note that, okay? Because I can see some issues coming from this uh, point of view, okay? Now, um, and also I want to talk about this. When, I, when we introduce the stream function, it says that the conservation of mass is automatically satisfied okay this is not the case for the velocity potential sometimes i see these issues pop up as well okay by introducing a velocity potential you need to check the conservation of mass whether it is satisfied or not by defining a velocity potential function 
the irrotationality, irrotationality conditions are automatically satisfied. Now let's take a moment here and explain this. Okay. By defining a velocity potential function, so if I'm giving the velocity potential function, it means that that exists, right? If somebody gives me the velocity potential function, then my irrotational conditions are automatically satisfied. What I mean by the irrotational conditions are these three highlighted equations in the screen, okay? I will not be demonstrating all three for you due to the time limitation, but I will focus on the third one, which is the del v del x is equal to del u del y. And this is the equation that we need to check for 2D flows, okay? And however, you can also replicate this process for the first and the second highlighted equation to illustrate that they are also satisfied as well. Okay, so what I will say is the third equation over there was del v del x was del u del y. So that's what I'm testing, right? I'm not sure, but I'm testing. So what I'm gonna do is as my v is introduced up here, I'm just gonna pull this v from here down there and the same thing for the u as well. I'm simply gonna insert this. So what this means is this is what I'm testing. Del of del x of v, but v is del velocity potential del y, right? So the question is, is it really equal to del del y of u? u is del phi del x. Okay, so if I kind of rewrite these, you will see that it's going to be del square phi del x del y is it really equal to del square phi del y del x. Okay, so actually this looks, this may look familiar to you from the stream function concept. If you remember there, we had a similar approach. Okay, and I asked the question, so I'm going to repeat again. If I'm given a function, okay, in this case, the function symbol is different, but it's still a function. Does it matter whether I'm taking the partial with respect to y first, then x, versus x, then y? Okay, so the order of differentiation. The answer is no, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this equation will automatically satisfy it. Okay, that's what it means by its rotational condition automatically being satisfied as well. However, I want to highlight here is uh, check whether conservation of mass or continuity equation is satisfied or not. Okay, so that, that we need to check. So I wanna explicitly write it here for, uh, for us. And if I remember, let's take an incompressible flow, I'm gonna get del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z is equal to zero, right? So that's what I need to text. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my u from the definition how it relates to this velocity potential and plug it in. So this is gonna be del del x of, the u is del velocity potential del x plus, so basically this is u, plus del of del y of v, which is del velocity potential del y, again, this is v, plus del del z of del velocity potential del z, okay? And this needs to be satisfied. This needs to equal to zero. And if I rewrite this, I'm gonna obtain this del square phi del x squared plus del square phi del y squared plus del square phi del z squared is equal to zero, okay? So this needs to be checked whether this is satisfied or not, okay? In mathematics, you may remember, this is called the Laplace equation, okay? Laplace equation. So it's an important equation from mathematics, this type of second order uh, partials that I take with respect to each direction.